This how-to video will walk you through how to mount an advanced vibration meter. There are three different varieties available. For leaded options, the sensor element is housed inside the aluminum cube. For this, we have the industrial leaded option and the commercial leaded option. The major benefit for these leaded options is the rigid mounting of the cube. Leaded versions are ideal for higher frequency applications. Because of the size of the cube, it can be positioned in tight locations that can be hard to reach. There is also a non-leaded commercial AA option. The sensor element is inside the sensor casing for the non-leaded option. This is ideal for direct mounting of the equipment being monitored. Let's go over how to mount the leaded option first. The cube on leaded versions has an M4 by 0.7 mm threaded hole with an 8 mm depth through which a bolt or screw can hold it into place. Another option would be to use some super glue or rigid epoxy to adhere it to the surface you want to monitor. This can be an attractive option because they're quick and easy to apply. However, it might not be the best option for some environments. If this sensor is going to be used in an area that is dirty, exposed to harsh elements, experiences very high and low temperatures, or uses solvents nearby, we suggest you bolt the cube down. The same can be said for the sensor enclosure itself. Holes in the flanges located on the end are large enough that they can be bolted into place. Double-sided sticky tape or glue on the back of the device is also a good option as well, depending on your environment. The non-leaded commercial option comes with a pair of mounting holes on either side. Screws are included with the sensor when shipped that are large enough to hold it into place, and feel free to use your own screws for a little more depth if necessary. Double-sided sticky tape or superglue are also good alternatives. We recommend a combination to really hold the sensor into place. Bolting the sensor down will be the best option if it's being used in a dirty area with solvents nearby or exposed to extremely high and low temperatures. That's it for mounting the sensor, but keep watching as we go over settings for the advanced vibration meter. Sensor name is a unique name you give the sensor to easily identify it in a list. The heartbeat interval is how the sensor communicates with the gateway if no activity is recorded. Aware state heartbeat is how often the sensor communicates with the gateway while in an unaware state. Vibration mode determines whether the sensor will become aware after vibration goes above this value. Vibration aware threshold is the maximum allowable level of vibration. Readings above this integer will send the meter into an aware state. Vibration hysteresis is a buffer to prevent the sensor from bouncing between standard operation and an unaware state when the assessments are very close to a threshold. Minimum sensitivity will set the lowest level of vibration to be recorded. Values below the setting are ignored. No analysis will occur and will not count toward the duty cycle. Setting this to zero will force a sensor to analyze every time, including noise and the duty level will always be 100%. Window function determines which window to use the filter on FFT results. If the sample rate for the window function for velocity and acceleration are the same, one set of samples will be taken instead of two, saving power and reducing measurement time. Accelerometer range is a maximum observable g-force. Measurement interval is the interval in seconds between measurements. Sample rate sets the sample rate for the accelerometer. As the sample rate decreases, the amount of time it takes for the sample increases. For example, a 25Hz sample time is 10.24 seconds. A 6.25Hz sample time is 40.96 seconds. Keep this in mind when setting the measurement interval. Frequency range minimum is the lowest allowable frequency to consider when measuring vibration. Frequency range maximum is the highest allowable frequency to consider when measuring vibration. Field transmissions before link mode is the number of transmissions the sensor sends without response from a gateway before it goes into battery saving link mode. In link mode, the sensor will scan a new gateway and if not found, will enter battery saving sleep mode for up to 60 minutes before trying to scan again. A lower number will allow sensors to find new gateways and fewer missed readings. Higher numbers will enable the sensor to remain with its current gateway in a noisy RF environment. Zero will cause the sensor to never join another gateway. To find a new gateway, the battery will have to be cycled out of the sensor. 
Finish by selecting the Save button. Be sure to select the Save button anytime you make a change to any of the sensor parameters. All changes made to the sensor settings will be downloaded to the sensor on the next sensor heartbeat. Once the change has been made and saved, you will not be able to edit the sensor's configuration again until it has downloaded the new setting. Most importantly, be sure to visit the Actions page before logging out. Actions is where you will set your alerts and who to notify in the case of something going wrong. For steps on how to do this, please watch the video titled Creating an Action. Thanks for watching. To view more video support files, go to monet.com/support.